Sorry that I cannot see you. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you to be to be here. Uh, first of all, I want to thank to uh, Ellen Lang and uh, Ilan Busseta for organizing this event. I'm Italian and I live in Budapest since uh, six years. I make painting and sculpture. I write quotes and poems, and I'm the founder, along with other five international artists of Cracking Art. For my 10th uh, birthday, a neighbor gave me the book Renaissance and Mannerism. Decades later, I realized that the book brought my life's path through beauty, harmony, and art. It was the beginning of my journey. And that book today leaded me here in front of you because we are the results of every single moment, decision, and encounter of our life. To get to the philosophy of my artworks, I have to take a step back of some centuries. I'm sure that you all know this fresco. It's the last judgment by Michelangelo Bonarroti in the Sistine Chapel in Rome. And you will certainly have already seen this too. It's one of the first examples of cave painting dating back thousands of years and was discovered in a cave in Argentina. Instead, this one is on the cave of Lascaux in France, to name just a couple. Although we don't know the exact moment of the transition from the Homo erectus to the Homo sapiens, and different theories suggest how our ancestors became more and more capable to build tools, how they started the abstract reasoning and became intellectually evolved, I'm convinced that this, that the real time evolution is just enclosed in what the rock painting represents. And that is the first step toward the self awareness and the introspection of mankind. Since then, the deep darkness that was inside man has been defeated forever by the light of spirituality. An invisible trait unites those ancestors of our to Plato, Galileo Galilei, Leonardo da Vinci. Michelangelo Buonarroti, Beethoven, William Blake, Einstein, Picasso, and many others right up to the present day. And that thread has never broken. These drawings are the first example of art, although those who created them didn't know they were artists. But let's leave the cave in Argentina in Las Cos and return to Rome, to this sacred place that is a Sistina Chapel. It contained one of the most impressive and extraordinary work of art ever seen in the art world, is the depiction of the last judgment. I'm not an art historian or an art critic, but I'm from the other side of the barricade. So I live through vision and sensation. Maybe this is the reason why my lecture of the fresco could be different from other point of view. I will therefore focus on two details, which in my opinion are extremely important, for understanding the man and the artist Michelangelo and for reading his masterpiece. The fresco, which for centuries was a, a true manifesto of the church, is sumptuous, magnificent, and can frighten anyone observing it. The first detail is this one. Why, in the middle of the physicality of the character he painted, all flesh, muscle, and vitality, did Michelangelo decide to portray himself as a skin emptied of its contents, because he wanted to put himself in a critical position against the church and its teaching, because he was aware that the true spirituality doesn't reside within the walls of ever more lavish cathedral, in the mechanical prayer or in blindly submission to rule that lead men to an unconscious slavery, but rather it's in the personal affair that men can find God. Michelangelo moves away from all the pomp of the realistic bodies around him because he was convinced that those characters was emptier than his skin, emptier because not consciousness. This image is even more famous than the previous one. And in my opinion, the artist underlined what I've just described in reference to his self-portrait. Here, God and man are facing each other. In this detail, the genius of Michelangelo goes beyond all imagination. 
that distance of a few centimeters between the two fingers frees their gesture for the eternity. God and man will never meet. It's impossible to think of the fresco without these two elements. They are the cornerstone of Michelangelo's great masterpiece and his brave critical stance against the church. You see, although they are thousands of years apart, there is no difference between Michelangelo's painting and the prehistorical one. In fact, in different ways and with different tools, they are both the result of man needs to tell stories, feeling, vision, and record their own time through the use of images whose language knows no border. The same trait connects Michelangelo to modern and contemporary art, because the artists continue to be the place of ideas, the square where everyday life suggests new stimuli, the point of departure toward new goals. It's impossible to imagine the Rolling Stones and Pink Floyd without the existence of Beethoven. Today, we live in a time of absolute price, and not only in economic terms, but above all in individual and therefore social terms. Progress has turned the mirror into a monitor that doesn't reflect our image, but a projection of a human being that is stereotyped and built of the, of the needs of a system which tend to destroy the identity that is unique and irreputable, irreputable for each of us. We need a new renaissance. We need to change our point of view through new lenses and new eyes, but above all, through a new spirituality. It's from this concept and from my own personal needs that I started my research, which led me to create painting and sculpture to create performances and video installation, even write a book titled 7362. And the best way to express myself was to use a series of recognizable symbols. My family name is Veronese, like one of the most famous artists of the Renaissance. So I decided to be inspired by extraordinary period to change the humanity. Each detail of the artwork is symbolic the use of the silicon, the images, and the structure in three different thicknesses. As well as being a symbol of beauty and fragility, the butterfly is a symbol of change and metamorphosis. For many ancient cultures, it was the symbol of spirituality. And the Renaissance art, along with the dragonfly, it was the symbol of resurrection of trust. The portrait of women are not just a memory of that period, but also my personal tribute to them, because women are the true keeper of the secret of life, and they are the energy of the universe. This is why they have been repressed by men in many countries for thousands of years, and they still are even today. The silicon dots around the subject of the painting represent the energy, the life force that connects everything without which nothing can exist. I show you a real artwork, just a small sample. So you can understand better. I hope you can see well how they are made. It's a special technique. It's a, a printed on the panel with different thickness. And then uh, I put the silicone with the pistol. This is the representation of the energy because everything is connected. Here I insert the new element, the skull. For most people, this is the symbol of the death, therefore the end of existence. But I often use it as a symbol of transformation and equality. In fact, there is no skin color, no religion, no class distinction. In the ancient Rome, when the general returned victorious from military campaign and they were greeted by the enthusiastic crowd, a slave next to them repeated the phrase, memento mori. Remember that you are just a man and you will die, even if today everybody loves you and you are considered a hero and great leader. So in my artworks, the skull assumed the power of the mirror, which reflect the simple human reality that we have to face. It's not a pessimistic concept or a negative vision, 
but it's simply the courage to look at what's around us without fear or prejudice, because facing reality is the only way to change it. Even if the visual art doesn't have the immense audience like the other media, today more than ever, the artists must try to make people aware. Whenever my artwork make one single person reflect on the topic that they deal with, I reach my goal. This is my, my mission. And exactly because everyone can be master not only of his own life, but also the change around him, I decide to use myself as well in some of my painting. It's not egocentricity, but awareness and taking responsibility because I'm convinced that if the voice has a face, it's much more believable. For example, in this artwork titled Uomo Nuovo, I'm inside the world in the fatal position as a symbol of the art. I'm waiting that the flutter of a butterfly's wing give birth to me as a new man, free to express the full force of the message that heart can hold. As you can see, the butterflies came out of the skull, which is not that, but simply metamorphosis. And I also represented myself in this one, which is my most important artwork. It's titled The Bill, two meter by five. It's the reconstruction of Leonardo da Vinci Last Supper in a contemporary way, where a poster has been changed with the symbols of the power. Let's look at some detail. Judah, who is Leonardo's masterpiece, is holding a bag with 30 pieces of silver, a symbol of his betrayal, is only a bag containing white powder to symbolize the contemporary drug, the media and the social media that apparently make us feel free, but actually as life us more and more. In the center, myself, not like a new Jesus, of course, but as a simple witness of the expandable humanity, all of us. The black glasses represent the eyed reality, while the glass with the wine in the position of the heart represent the blood of the sacrifice. The equality of the people is represented by the world where the continents have the same color because borders are a human invention. The title is the bill, because if we have not the strength and the courage to talk at the human being behind the mask of the power, we will pay the bill of their dinner. You see, there are many different ways of making art and being artist. For me, it means uh, to open the door of the studio and immerse myself in the contemporaneity. And through art, as a witness of the human condition, give my small help for the necessary change. My aesthetic hides and reveal at the same time I scream against the system which enslaves us, which tames, which reprograms and forces us to forget everything too quickly. We are a hum humanity with Alzheimer. This is the message of the installation of Will Be the Next, presented at the Contemporary Istanbul in 2014, and also in the space factory of the Macro Museum in Roma years ago. As you can see, there are 10 pairs of feet of five years old children positioned like at the morgue. On each couple, there is a label with a flag of nine countries involved in new wars and revolution since the attack of the Twin Tower, and the written finally free because only that can give them the freedom from suffering. In the last pair of feet, the label have no flag and no Britain. It's waiting for another world to rip its victim, who will be the next. One day I was at the fair, one young guy stopped in front of the installation and started crying. He was from Syria. Those tears made me realize that now more than ever, art should, should awake the conscious rather than make living room more beautiful. Notice the last uh, flag is Ukraine. Uh, in 2014, I started the Maidan revolution. I was convinced, it was a feeling that was not a finish there, it was some, just the beginning of something worse, something wrong. Uh, we are living this moment now. And when we talk about awareness, 
we cannot ignore the place where we live, the, the Earth or Gaia, as I was, she was renamed by the British scientist James Lovell in 1979. Is a real living organism whose fragility we often don't take in consideration. Once, man's destiny depended on certain natural events, and that is why they were worshipped as God. Today, the fate of nature depends on us, and that is how these two artworks were born. Heart of Earth. And fuck the world. The message is a uh, let's warn the planet and we will bleed to death. Now I want to tell you uh, something specific about my experience, something that's happened years ago. Uh, years ago, I was invited for a solo show in Istanbul. I have never been uh, there before, and it was the real love at the first sight. Every time my eyes was watching the Bosphorus, I had the same feeling on the skin and the soul. I was already connected with the city even before to arrive there. So I decided to move from Italy to Turkey. It was a very strong decision. I was 50 years old. In Italy, I had a beautiful house, my family, my friend, but Istanbul was calling me. My soul was calling me. So after 50 years of accumulation of memories, objects, and feeling, and you can imagine what I mean, I was in front of another crossroad of my life. I had to decide what was really important for me. What could I have loaded into my small pickup truck? This one, very small. It was not just the beginning of the trip from my country to a new one, but was the most beautiful, exciting, and important inner trip I ever, I ever done. It gave me the opportunity to make the changes I need, both as a man and as an artist. In Istanbul, we born many new projects, like the book, some installation, a series of carpet, a movie, um, and the book as well. Mine is not an interpretation of the place because I'm not a landscape painter. But from Istanbul, I received a strong inner push, a sort of deep breath that doesn't fit the lungs, but the soul. Some of you have heard about the music of the Evelyn Sphere. It's an inaudible sound caused by the movement of the planet and was already known to ancient as Pythagoras, Leonardo, Dante, Bach, and probably our older ancestors. The artists, they are like antennas capable of feeling the vibration became their messenger. Two important astronomers have said that we are made of the same material of, of the stars. William Blake wrote that you can see the world in a grain of sand. I'm increasingly convinced that the more we move away from our mother, the heart, and our father, the universe, the more we move away from our true essence. One evening, a few years ago, I was living a big crisis. I was embittered, sad, tired. So before to fall asleep, I asked for a sign. The next day, something that had never happened before happened. When I turned my computer back on, the image I had chosen for my desktop, a phrase dedicated to me by a Tibetan Lama, the one you, you, you can read, had disappeared and been replaced by the image of the galaxy Andromeda. This was the sign I had asked for. It was the genesis of the project entitled The Universe, where the U and S are in capital letter. It means us, because we are the universe. In this series of artwork, the background contains image of galaxy and the foreground semi-transparent silhouette, but also symbol and some of my writing. One of the characters holding a closed book and the other one an open book with the image of St. George slaying a dragon. I hope you can see in uh, your monitor as it is big enough. Both hands are wearing a ring. A red one means sacrifice and the other is a skull, metamorphosis. The closed book represents the slavery caused by the ignorance while the open book represents the free thought the critical capacity and the evolutionary progress through knowledge. 
In the iconography of the Christian religion since the Middle Age, St. George is the good, while the dragon represents the devil. In my artwork, St. George is the man who has broken his chain and found his true spiritual identity by killing the real enemies, superstition and ignorance. The phrase on the, book, the open book says, and when the last of the enemy has destroyed himself, we will come back, like angels without heaven, like men without hell, like clover without sin. One journalist called me a warrior artist, but also an alchemist who transformed the lead of violence into gold of beauty and grace. And talking about gold, this one is an artwork made by a special technique that consists on printing on gold leaves. The whole project is linked to the philosopher's stone myth, capable, according to the alchemist, to turn lead into gold, but obviously was just a metaphor for the psychological transformation of the individual, the evolution in a spiritual way, especially Carl Gustav Jung, so in the philosopher's stone, a metaphor of seeking the development of every human being, the force that drives him to his own identity through a never greater differentiation. Also in this series of artwork, the symbol is, is very important. For example, in this one, the row of men walking with their head bowed represent the blind approval that leads to the individual flattening and unhappiness. Upward the red balloon, that is destined, destined to explode in contact with the barber wire, rise a brain, symbol of intelligence and creativity. But the possibility of salvation exists in is called consciousness, represented by the only character who turn his gaze upward is also the only one with the heart, symbol of life, forgiveness, and love. This one. I hope you can see it. The four cardinal points from which the chain imprisoning the heart are the latitude of our inner world. And there will no peace or love or freedom if we continue to seek happiness outside of ourselves. What seems in balance is only an illusion because our heart is continuously stretched from all directions. Family, school, religion, society don't give us the key to open the door of the deeper part of ourselves. Those we live like the projection of their needs and expectations. Chain can also represent the obstacle and the walls that we build ourselves and that give us the excuse to get stuck in our comfort zone. Often our gratification goes through the possession of objects, people, or power. We don't realize that our ego is only the dis distorted image of our true nature. And by feeding it, we simply add a link to the golden chain to which we are bound with no matter how long it is. If we will try to run, sooner or later it will stop us. The child represents the purity that we forgot. Time passes inexorably and we'll be transformed in different form of energy, from material to spirit and from spirit to material again, in an infinite continuum that will defeat the time itself. I show you a more sample how they look in a real, the, the one made on gold leaf. I hope you can see well. So my, I, I, I am a digital painter. So I use the computer to re realize the, the images and there they are printed in, in a, on different uh, medium. We forget that we are children of this planet and what belong to nature more than the nature in terms of possession does not belong to us. In this artwork, I decide to represent our connection with everything through this character who came to life from the roots of the tree, which came to life from the man being. Imagine to connect the heart of the, of the, the, the character, the man and the, and the art uh, under the tree and then connect the branch and the, the roots. 
will uh, de design an infinite. We live like tightrope walker who walk on the barber wire. We are constantly suspended in the void with thousand doubts that greet us and to which we want to find answer. But it's better to use the reason or the emotion. Both involve risk and the choice of one or another leads to different results. But more risky is to be stuck because it would mean giving up on living. We define a butterfly's life short without knowing its concept of eternity. Arrogantly, we always tend to use ourselves as a yardstick and putting ourselves above everything else. With this attitude, a butterfly's life may seem very brief, but if we compare our life to eternity, it's not short as well. Only if we change our point of view, we can finally have a more sensitive and profound approach to what's around us. The number represent uh, the, the second. So there are 60 numbers, so one minute or one hour. Love doesn't count. Love cannot be measured in terms of time, but in terms of quality and intensity. Don't ask to yourself how long it will last, but how deep it will be. Only those who decide to use their heart can give back form and completeness to their being. Only stopping time, here represented by the 60 number, can really love. You see, there is always a character, a small heart and one eye. One eye is the representation of the third eye, the eye of the spirituality, of the connection. Too often we create the wall and the obstacle that block us. Too often we let dogmas imprison us. Too often we live in the past. Too often we trample the present intent to imagine the future. The choice we make today will create the future. We should resonate in the past as decision, no mistake. And getting out of the cage is possible, but depend on us. This artwork uh, is made in this way, the, the, the cage, is a mirror. So the, the, the structure of the cage is printed on the real mirror and then is uh, on the, the background with gold. So the spectator can see itself in the cage. And try to imagine this would be much better if love should, should uh, shot first, if love would shot first. This is the second part. Be aware of the damage we are creating to the planet. The planet was the reason 30 years ago for the birth of a new artistic movement called Crackin' Art. I'm one of the founder members, along with other five international artists. The name Cracking Art came from the English verb to crack, which expressed the state of being split, broken, cracked, or crashed. This catalytic cracking, as the name suggests, is also the term for the chemical reaction that occurs when converting raw crude oil into plastic. For us, it represents the instant when something natural became artificial. And this is the reason why we decide to give back to the plastic the symbolically original shape and more. Have you ever heard of, uh, about the Pacific trash vortex? is a buildup of garbage created by ocean currents that transport our indisposed in, in waste, sorry, especially plastic, to a precise point of the Pacific Ocean, is a new continent as large as Texas. But there are also smaller ones in other places of the planet. The sea takes 400 years to dispose of plastic bottles and other plastic trashes. And often this is the result in the ecological terms. Conscious of what human beings can do in terms of destroying the environment, we decide to use the language of art 
to launch our SOS in favor of the network, but using plastic as a medium. And since in the 1993, we have been producing animal in recyclable plastic to create public inst installation around the world to educate people to a more intelligent use of this material, which cannot give up, which surround us more and more. There are not good or bad material, but rather wrong use. We depend on our behavior. Here, a fly of seagull trapped in barbed wire was in the Firenze in 1994, in the Brunelleschi cluster. For sure, you can recognize this uh, city. This is uh, in Milano with the 1,000 dolphins, still in 1994. And the follow following one is uh, the photo I took for the cover of the book Electra, re realized on the occasion of our invitation by the curator Harald Zeman at the 49th Venice Biennial in 2001. The title of the installation was SOS World. Harald initially asked us to put some turtle in the Italian pavilion, but we refused because the message had to be universal and could not be relegated in only one of the spaces of the exhibition. So we proposed to install the turtle around the pavilions of all countries represented. He agreed and we installed 1,500 golden turtles. I bring one of the turtles. This is the, more, the, the smaller one. I hope you can see. The other was one meter big. Tartor representing wisdom and considered by many cultures as the personification of the great mother. Like shark and crocodile are the last dinosaur still on the planet. They were the perfect testimonial of our message. We came out of one of our natural elements, which is the sea, to came here to the sacred site of world culture to ask for help to save the planet. The choice of the color gold underlined how precious the environment is. And from the biennial, Biennale to another place, somewhat less sacred, but with a very strong communicative impact. One of the largest small centers in Europe, Orio Center, situated in front of the Bergamo Airport and on the highway linking Turin to Venice. It means millions of visual contact per day. We installed 7,000 animals. You see in the facade, there are crocodiles. There are five meter crocodiles. There was 300. Inside was looking like this. When it comes to place used poorly for trading, of course, the intellectual of the uh, art turn up their nose. But our message cannot be relegated only in the special place for art or intelligence or something else. Plastic is an element found in daily life of all human beings in the world. And as well, and as well, we want to amaze and to amuse. We want also to educate people in a more intelligent use of the plastic. The choice of the animal is never casual, but dictated by the symbolism that they may contain. Here we was in Milano, in front of the Theater La Scala. We have chosen the snake because the slowness can represent wisdom. And in a world that runs faster and faster, slowing, slowing down helps us to discover many more things, both inside and outside of our set. This was in Paris. This is Baku. This is a permanent installation of penguin at the Kampa Museum in Prague. Penguin are the symbol of the Arctic Pole. So only a severe distortion of the environment would drive them to live in a very unusual place such as Prague or in a green expanse in Belgium. Those are Mercat. Mercat protect each other. So they know that the, the, the strength of the group is about the individual. This is in Portofino and the Park Museum. Miami. Uh, 
Milano. This is Le Mans. It's interesting the contrast of our colorful and uh, animal and the architecture, and also the plastic uh, and this ancient uh, amazing cathedral. Milano. Dubai. Cleveland, Indianapolis, Sydney. Uh, the big difference from our sculpture installation from the other is uh, you have to touch our sculpture. You have to play with them because if you can play with the art, you can touch the art and the material you became more friend, you can also understand better the message that, uh, that the artwork uh, contains. It's very important for us. This one is one of the latest sculpture, a baby elephant that uh, with this posture support historical building or places dedicated to the art and the culture. With our peaceful invasion, which today number more than 400, we have colored many places in the world like Italy, United States, Korea, Israel, Russia, Australia, China, Emirates, Chile, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Thailand, and in almost all European countries. Another prerogative of our is to create a fundraiser for medical research. And for some years now, wherever it's possible, for restoring work of art and historical places in the city in which we operate. This was a... Uh, on, uh, on the top of the Milano Cathedral. And on this occasion, we have a collected fund for the restoration of one of the spears. At the end of the installation, the animal returned in our stock to be reused for other installation. The one they are ruined are chopped up to return to the produ production cycle. Another will find a safe place in the home of collector to keep remind us what our commitment for the future must be. Thousands of years have passed since those cave paintings, and man has evolved exponentially in terms of science and technology. But the roots of our spirituality are still the same. In the DNA of each of us are contained the codes of all humanity. We must learn to filter our vision of the world and life through the lenses of beauty and harmony. If we can do it, we will discover the best part of ourselves. Art should serve this purpose. Thank you very much. Hi, Marco. Thank you so much for uh, for this webinar for a small world community and then giving us all this insight to the philosophy of, of your work and telling us about your art and uh, even showing some artworks. Uh, it was really um, very wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very, for me, very strange to. To talk with my to my to my screen and don't see no nobody in front, but it was, it was a nice feeling. Yeah, I I, I totally you. understand that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, actually, I have a I have a couple of questions to you, and uh, also I would like to encourage here our participants to add their uh, questions uh, to the Q and A section. Uh, which I can then address uh, as well, but. Uh, I know that you're currently also working on a on a big project, and I actually I wanted to ask you, uh, perhaps you would like to tell us more about it. Uh, yes, this uh, is a new, strong, big uh, project uh, yeah. made with a friend of mine who's uh, maybe also, also in uh, on the, the between us uh, between us, and then yeah. uh, it's about the the big art of the build, the Last Supper uh, representation. Uh, for me, this uh, art was very important because it's a message, strong, strong message for everybody. It, uh, the artwork I made it on 2010. Right yeah. now, it's just uh, been ex exhibited four times. Uh, but this message is for uh, for uh, everybody. So for me, it's very important to try to bring the artwork to the people. Not waiting the people came in the gallery, gallery or museum to watch it, but mm -hmm. made the opposite. So bring the artwork to people so in the square 
during big events in the street or whatever. So the project is about to build a container uh, yeah. organized like a room of the gallery with the lighting, etc., and bring the, uh, the artwork all over. Every, everywhere is possible, all around Europe, all around the world, doesn't matter because for me it's very, very important because it's my, uh, it, it's the message for, for, for us, for wake up our consciousness to be careful to, because you, yeah. you, you know what's happened in those days. We are, when, when I say the humanity has an Alzheimer, because we forget everything so fast and we continue to make the same disaster, the same error, all, always. War, destruction, uh, uh, killing people, it, it's not possible. We are in 2023, we, we continue to live like in the prehistorical time. No, it's, it's not acceptable for me. So this project is about to bring people to a new consciousness, a new... Uh, mm, point of view through, through the art, through these, uh, these uh, artworks. Shall I, uh, shall I also share the, the link that you shared with me uh, recently, the Wandering Art Project in our chat here? Uh, yes, of course. Because uh, that could be also interesting uh, for our members. Then we have also received uh, a, a, a question. First uh, yeah. of all, Lilian. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Ah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So Lillian uh, first has thanked you, Marco, for the presentation, which was very insightful. And uh, she's also as asking if uh, the artworks are exhibited somewhere in Europe and, and could one purchase it? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I work with different gallery. I work in the gallery in uh, Switzerland, in Italy, in, in Hungary, in Spain, uh, in, Greek, in Greece, mm -hmm. uh, Cyprus, uh, in the Uni uh, United States also. Uh, yeah. So uh, you can contact me uh, in private or to Ilan uh, also. I think she's all right uh, that uh, she's helped me on, uh, on, on business. So you can contact her. We'll uh, give you the name of the gallery or Ilan directly with Ilan. And also, uh, I just wanted to highlight that Marco's details are um, listed on the event page as well, if you want to... Um, check it or follow Marco or get in touch directly. But I have a couple of uh, more questions um, also. Uh, first question is, how did you become an artist? It's a very interesting question. You know, <laughs> yes. I, never studied, I never studied art in my life. Uh, so I'm a self-made man. Uh, it, thanks to the book I, I show you at the beginning, this was uh, the unconsciousness, uh, uh, let's say, um, important part of my life. Because in this, uh, this uh, uh, book, there was a painting uh, from Correggio, was a very important uh, uh, Italian painter from Renaissance. It was fascinated from this artwork. And so I started uh -huh. to paint it. So I started, I was 10, 10 years old, so you can imagine. Try to reproduce this painting without any success, of course. But they think that something put a seed on my soul to understand what they wanted to do for my life. You know, there is a, some people say that you, we don't decide when to, we buy a book. It's the book who choose us because we contain all the information, but we need something or someone who, bring, yeah. who can bring from our soul uh, the information. So mm -hmm. we read books because we, we need co uh, to be confirmed that the idea that we have. So it's happened to me with, with this book, maybe with the, the, the Renaissance and Red Manneries. Mm -hmm. So I, everybody is born as an artist, but unfortunately we forget it because, uh, because the school, because the society is better to be a lawyer than an artist for sure, but because you are more safe in life. <laughs> so, yes. so, but this is my mission. Yeah, I, know, I know why I'm I'm living in this moment, in this, uh, in this place, because this is a message. I'm a messenger, uh, as I call myself, not like, not that art is my messenger, because, you know, uh -huh. I try to spread my, my idea, my vision, because it's the best way to learn from the other, is to be connected with people. So for me, it's very important when they have an exhibition to, yeah. and, uh, to be there and talk with people, because many times people teach me the reason why I made Simon consciously choose when I made, they produce art. So for me, it's very, very important. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, then actually Lilian is also asking, do you by any chance uh, recall the names of the Switzerland galleries or shall I, shall we get in touch with Lilian after the event perhaps? It's better. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, it's better. Yeah. To do. Okay, perfect. So, um, so <laughs> another question, if you could Please. become, if you could become one of your works of art, which one you would you choose and why? Let's exclude the big one, probably. <laughs> oh, the big one, yes, it's too easy. Uh, exactly. It's very difficult because I have made the installation with the, the feet, for, for, of course, uh, it's yeah. very impressive, very, very strong, the message. Uh, there is no one in particular that, apart the bill, uh, that uh, I I like most. Uh, no, no, there is not. Because uh, uh, for me, the artwork and the sculpture I make, is, they are tools. They are tools to say something, to spread messages. This for, for me is very important. You know, uh, there are people they write book and make a movie. For me, uh, spread messages through art. So they are just a way to spread the the the, the messages. So it's, I'm not. Uh, uh, in love of one art, artwork more than in another, yeah. apart the beer, okay, because it's, it's yeah. very impressive it's because it's big, it's two by, by five, it's very, very, very big artwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I needed six months to finish it, very, very big work, because you you see, when I put, say, this the silicone, yeah, those lot of silicone, they're made can with you, a piece. Can you, can you show it a bit? Yes, like this, no. okay. a little bit more on your left. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, we can see. see so yeah. they are put it on with the pistol one by one. Uh, it is very, yeah. very, very long to do. Very long. So for because of this, the bill uh, needed six months, seven months, more or less. But how do you do your daily work? Do you do you wake up at eight and do you finish at five pm? Yeah. Or I'm very, I'm a, a very strange artist because yeah. I don't, I don't smoke. I never drink. I never use drugs. I have my routine, so at eight o'clock I, I, I wake up and I, I start the, the, the physical routine. So, uh -huh. so, uh, and then I start to okay read the news, uh, uh, to be inspired, to listen to music. For me, music is very, very important. For example, the the, the sculpture "Fuck the World" yeah. was born one night when uh, I was uh, driving from my city, Biella, my city where the city where I born, was born, to Milano. Yeah. And there was the song of Michael Jackson, her, so her song. I don't know why, but this song has switched on one light and one image on my brain. So I saw immediately the sculpture. So I came mm -hmm. back at the home, I designed, I designed the, the sculpture, I started to work on it. So for me, music is very, very important. It's one of my uh, strong in, in, uh, in inspirational uh, way. Oh, people, the mm -hmm. human being is, uh, as well. Okay, sounds interesting. So, but uh, tell us a little bit. Uh, well, a lot of us think that we are not creative, right? So, what advice would you give uh, to us if we would like to awaken our creativity? And uh, yes, yeah, are there any practices that you would highlight on top of like listening to music, which works very well for you, of course? <laughs> Everybody is creative. Everybody yeah. is creative. Exactly. But sometimes we forget it. My everybody's for uh, is creativity. When we make a decision, our of uh, outside of our comfort zone is that we are creative. Uh, when you think of something a little bit different from the other, we are creative. We are creative people, everybody. But okay, sometimes some people you can uh, be creative for business, so they are fully immersed in okay. this business. Other less, no, all of us is creative. Every every kids, every children, design, every make drawing. Everyone, everyone, everyone. So, so we, we just to practice. Yes, so let's do that. I will do that. <laughs> yeah, why not? Exactly. So actually we do not have more questions for now. If someone wants to ask another final question, we would be very happy to receive it. Just drop it in the Q&A section. But if, if we will not receive any other question for now, Marco, then uh, yes, so one more big, big uh, thank you uh, on behalf of our community. It was a big pleasure to have you here with us. I believe it was very interesting also to our audience. I hope. And, I hope. Well, certainly. Even um, if my, maybe my English was not perfect sometimes, okay. But... <laughs> 
we are in the international I'll try my best. we all have our accent so that's fine <laughs> in italian for me would be better okay it would be, it would be easier without the reading it was my regret to read because the way i don't remember all the, the, the single words now for me it was a, a very beautiful experience and really thanks to you to organize this exam a test to the, everybody is, a, is, a, is, on, is on the audience, even if I don't know the, your face, unfortunately. I will check, I will check your profile with the, the list of the other people. So thank you very much to uh, Anna, Claudia, Eva, Evan, uh, Io, Julia, Irina, Karina, Liliane, Maggie, Max, Margo, Margus, Paresh, S, Sabina, Shadi, Shamir, Shannon, Stella, and Travelers Nomads. Thanks to everybody for being here. Thank you very much, really. I hope to one day to meet you in, uh, in uh, real life, maybe during an event of a small world. Or uh, of during course. A mission. Really of would course, be of course. And also, Julia, uh, she's, um, she sent a message for you, Marco, just uh, <laughs> a thank you message for this inspiring and insight, insightful event. So I think. Um, thank you, Julia. <laughs> so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You, Marco. Inspire, you inspired me. You inspired me. <laughs> I just, I'm just a messenger. So you, you inspired me. That's what we try to do, right? So, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have a good evening and thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Again. Thank you again. Ciao, everybody. Yeah, ciao, ciao. Ciao. Good evening. Ciao, ciao. Grazie.